Welcome to Medicinal Trees of Mount Pisgah. I'm Candace Hunter. And I'm Sue Sierra Lupe. And, and we, we are, are the Practical Herbalists. Our first tree is a magnolia tree, and it's a sizable tree with some beautiful leathery leaves that when you take a look a little closer, you can see is accompanied by this unusual fruit. Normally in the spring, that's a beautiful white flower, but these leaves are significant in the fall. They have a fuzzy brown undertone that make it very distinctive. The magnolia's pod, I love that. It's used in traditional Chinese medicine to help tonify the key and to help with eyesight, which speaks to magnolia's ability to help you tonify your system. That's right. And the magnolia has a really high antioxidant property, a thousand times more potent than vitamin E. And it also has a chemical that um, promotes your steroid production in the body to decrease inflammation. This is the white oak, and it's a beautiful, huge, long-growing tree that has a very rugged bark that mostly is what people are collecting from downed branches in order to use the medicinal value. It does not make a very tasty tea, but it's really high in tannin, so that's what's really good for reducing inflammation from your throat or something. You can tell these leaves are very distinctive. They're deeply lobed, which is very distinctive to this particular tree. And it also has these wonderful galls that grow on them. And inside there is a wasp larva. One the galls were gall. used for dying. Oh. That's what oak apples are. So the galls that were gathered for dying. What about the acorns? Acorns were used medicinally to make coffee. You can still get coffee made with white acorn. Oh, well, the oak has a lot of, it grows so long, so it has lots of lichen and funguses and other critters that live on it. And that, usnea, is, is highly medicinal. It's an antibiotic. The galt burls here that you see on that oak tree are apprised by woodworkers and pipe makers. Mm-hmm. Pisgah hosts one of the few remaining white oak savannas, a community of white oak trees in the United States. It's a real treasure for us to behold. This is the coastal redwood, also just known as a, a redwood sequoia. And these are young trees, but they are known, the sequoias are known to live over 2,000 years old, and they are the world's tallest tree. They were known, they grow native all the way from Canada, all the way down into nor northern Mexico. Mm -hmm. And by native tribes, they were considered to be a connection between heaven and earth. Yes, for good reason. These needles are disinfectant. They help clear the lungs, and they're very high in antioxidants. So it makes a nutrient-rich tea. The bark is spongy, and it absorbs water, which is how it staves off fire after fire after fire for its long lifespan. Traditionally, the redwoods, um, coastal redwood and the great giant redwoods barks were used to help tonify the blood in like a tincture or a tea form. Oh, the sap was also used for um, reducing debilitated and rundown conditions, so recovery. It gives both sort of stimulating, activating properties. The Douglas fir is a, a common tree in this area and it has very distinctive cones and the needles, the needle tips, are great for throwing into a tea with some ginger or some cinnamon to help clear the lungs and also to help treat colds. The bark has been used by the native peoples on the west coast here to help with um, bronchial conditions and also to help clear the sinuses. Yeah. Yeah, very rugged. Our Oregon ash here would be a relative of Yadrasil, the ash that was the connection between heaven and earth to the Nordic peoples. The, you can see the little hollows were often considered to be portals into the other worlds by Celtic peoples and other Europeans. And good for bees. And excellent bees bee trees like those trees. Winnie the Pooh's bee tree. Yep. The bark is used to treat edema and the leaves in the spring are collected to treat arthritis. 
As we walk along the riverbank in Mount Pisgah, we run into another one of our favorites, which is the big leaf maple. And it is very distinctive as it has enormous leaves. They're the biggest of all the maple species, sometimes up to 15 inches across. That's how big they are. And they're very deeply lobed. This is a really good tree for beginners to, that are learning to identify trees to start with because it is so distinctive and has lots of cool properties. It's also very high in analgesic chemicals within both the leaves and within the bark. And if you look at the leaves, if you're a beginner, Sorry. even the fall or the spring, it's easy to identify from even far away. And, and it also has some distinctive seeds that have wings on them that when it gets a little windy, they'll fall fluttering to the ground. And some children like to play with it as helicopters. The bark is easy to identify in winter because it's deeply grooved. It's usually got four sides, and it's often either a reddish-brown or a grayish-brown color. If you're collecting the leaves to help you with a toothache or some other pain, collect them in the spring. The chestnut has a very distinctive leaf because it has little spikes on the edges of them, and it has really deep ridges when you look on the top and the bottom of the leaf. If you look at the uh, one of the seed pods, it's very pokey. It's yeah. very distinctive. They look like little hedgehogs. And then inside of them, there's these adorable little chestnuts with tiny puffs at the end. They look like, to us, little truffula trees. Now, if you're using it medicinally, use the leaves to reduce fever as they were used before the blight of the 1900s. The Oregon myrtle has been a transplant into the... Mount Pisgah Arboretum, and it is a distinctive tree that mostly is identified by its waxy leaves that have an incredible fragrance, and that is what that fragrance has been lent it to use in soups and stews like other laurels would have, laurel leaf would have. It's got a an beautiful little nut which shows you that it is related to the avocado, and that nut is edible. The ginkgo tree is another transplant, and this is a dinosaur tree that was brought to the Arboretum. It's a tree of memory. It's one of those trees that work. the leaves are great at turning into a tincture or a tonic or even a capsule, and this is the time when you would be harvesting them to help with memory or for circulation, or Alzheimer's, etc. because right now the tannins are just leaching out of them. Ginkgo leaves are often used in Asian art and as symbolism for peace, love, and vitality. They can also be used to represent male and female energies like yin and yang, in part because the trees come in either male or female form. Hawthorn is one of our weedy treasures here at Mount Pisgah. If you've ever heard the old English saying, by oak, ash, and thorn, the thorn would be the hawthorn. And it's full of flavonoids, which are really good for treating hypotension and other issues that the heart has. It's just one of those very safe plants that anyone with concerns about their heart could take to fortify their system. If you want to collect them, then collect them after the first frost. If you want to collect the leaf and flower, collect that in the spring. Did you enjoy this video? Then like it on YouTube. For more information on the trees in this video, listen to our accompanying podcast, Show 31, Herbal Tree Medicines. You can check out our website, The Practical Herbalist, and our eBooks, which are available on Amazon.